Electrical engineering is arguably the most diverse engineering field. It encompasses everything ranging from computer hardware, electronics, software, telecommunication, and power systems engineering. The interesting thing is that there are a lot of overlaps within these fields as well. For example, you have power electronics, which is an overlap of power system engineering and electronics, and electrical engineering also overlaps with other disciplines, such as biomedical, to form electrical and biomedical engineering. A lot of electrical engineering undergraduate programs have a fair bit of focus these days on software as well. And that's why you see many electrical engineers finding jobs as software engineers. The focus of this video, however, is power systems engineering. We will discuss how you can kickstart your career within power systems engineering. And if you're already working as power systems engineer, what are the things that you can do to further propel your career? But before we jump into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Let us start with the first question. What is power systems engineering? The modern power systems engineering as we know it today dates back to the time of Thomas Edison around 150 years ago when he developed the first electrical utility which was backed by public money by investors. During those early days, there was a tussle going on between AC systems and DC systems. So if you know the history, you would know that AC systems were backed and designed and actually almost from scratch developed by Nikola Tesla. And DC systems were promoted by Edison. This feud between AC and DC became quite personal and nasty. The DC group ended up electrocuting a lot of animals in public settings just to show how dangerous AC could be. But in the long run, AC came up on the top and majority of the modern power system is actually AC based. So 60 Hertz, three phase, um, transformers, motors, primarily they are all based on AC systems and that's thanks to Nikola Tesla. However, more recently, the DC system is also making a comeback in the form of high voltage DC transmission and battery storage systems. So the field of power systems engineering is actually concerned with generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity. Let us now discuss education requirements for becoming a power systems engineer. Like most of the other engineering programs, a four-year undergraduate engineering degree is generally a minimum requirement for most power systems engineering jobs. Some might even require a graduate degree. Typically, you would complete a bachelor's of engineering or bachelor's of science degree in electrical engineering. And if there is a specialization offered at your university in the upper years, you would take power system intensive courses. Otherwise, most of the electrical engineers with interest in power systems take anywhere between two to four, sometimes even six power systems focused courses. If you're still in school and planning to carve out a career in power systems engineering, I would recommend you to take as many power systems courses as you can and also try to maintain your overall GPA as high as possible. You might have heard people say that GPA doesn't really matter in engineering, but the truth is that it remains one of the easiest ways to filter candidates when employers are pre-screening the applicants for at least entry-level jobs. If you have been out of school for some time and want to power your career towards power systems engineering, I would recommend you to gain some particular skills within power systems engineering, such as familiarizing yourself with codes such as NEC, NFP70E, NESC, IEEE, color books, especially the red book, it's my personal favorite, and try to gain basic knowledge of some of the typical tools that are used by power systems engineers. I will actually make a separate video on this topic on key skill sets that are required in a lot of jobs for power systems engineers. Let us now discuss credential requirements for power systems engineers. Within electrical engineering, the value of professional engineering license is greatest in the power systems engineering subfield. That's because a lot of designs that are produced by power system engineers in the form of single line diagrams, wiring diagrams, schematics, equipment specification, power system studies, layouts, they all require sign and seal of a professional engineer. A lot of entry-level jobs prefer and even sometimes they actually require EIT certificate while majority of the intermediate to senior positions are filled by individuals who either have a PE license or are actively working towards one. 
EIT certificate can be obtained after passing the FE exam and meeting the minimum education requirements. If you plan on working within Power Systems Engineering, then FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation is your best bet. I have an entire playlist on FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation tips, for which the link is shared in the video description. I have published several books on the topic of FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation, and also developed an on-demand FE Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course with over 150 lectures that cover all topics as per the latest exam specification. Please check the description of this video for additional details. Now, once you have passed the FE Electrical and Computer Exam, the next and the final exam that you need to pass for PE licensure is the PE exam. Again, if you want to work within Power Systems Engineering, then your best bet is to take the PE Power Exam. I've published a study guide on the topic of PE Power Exam preparation and also developed an on-demand PE Power Exam preparation course with over 100 lectures that cover all topics as per the latest exam specification. Please check the description of this video for additional details on PE Power Exam preparation as well. In my opinion and based on my observation, PE license is by far the most valuable designation that you can have if you want to work within technical capacity in the industry. In fact, it can even serve as a nice launching pad for a career in engineering management. So what do power systems engineers do in their day-to-day -day job? I will make a separate video on the topic of various specializations that exist within power systems engineering, but in short, power system engineers are involved with design, management, and improvement of different aspects of the electric power system or the network, which encompasses its generation, transmission, and distribution. This can happen in many different settings, such as power plants, such as electricity, transmission, and distribution utilities, industrial, commercial, residential power distribution, research and development, equipment manufacturing, and so on and so forth. The next question that we are going to tackle is, how much do power system engineers make on an annual basis? According to the stats from the US Bureau of Labor, the median pay for power systems engineers in 2020 was $103,390 per year. So why should you consider a career in power systems engineering? In my opinion, you should consider a career in power systems engineering for multiple reasons, such as power systems engineering is at the forefront of green energy and sustainability drive, it is going to define our future. The number of job opportunities are continuously rising due to multiple factors such as rapidly aging workforce in electrical utility sector, shortage of engineering graduates with a focus on power systems engineering, and power systems engineering jobs also provide you a great flexibility because they can be found across all industries and pretty much in every geographic location. So you can choose to work in different industries and you can also choose to work in different areas, different locations. You're not tied to a particular geographic location. There are large investments that are being made in the electrical grid and power distribution infrastructure, which would translate in a lot more opportunities for employment. Although power systems engineering is actually a subfield of electrical engineering, but within this subfield even, you can find many specializations. In fact, in many of these specializations, such as protection and control, you can spend your entire career as a power systems engineer who specializes in protection and control. So in short, it offers a rewarding career which is compensated quite well, and at the same time, you're intellectually challenged and you have the opportunity to continuously grow both within the technical fields and if you want to become a generalist, you can easily transition into management as well. In summary, here is what you should do if you want to have a rewarding career within power systems engineering. If you are still in school, you can give yourself a head start by taking as many power systems focused courses as you can at your university or college, maintaining and improving your GPA, taking FE electrical and PE power exams as soon as possible because the more you delay these exams, the difficult they will become, and also try to get an internship to get a real life experience of what it is like to work as a power systems engineer. And by doing an internship, you will also be able to stand out from the crowd who just have the degree and no experience. I know it can be tough to get a job as a summer student, as an intern, but if you do manage to get an internship, it will basically do wonders for you at least for the entry level positions. If you're an electrical engineer who is already working in the industry and wants to power yourself into power systems industry, then there are two things that you need to do. A lot of self-studying 
and also strategically trying to look for opportunities maybe within your existing workplace where you can get some sort of exposure towards power systems engineering. And if you're already working as a power systems engineer, getting the PE license is probably the best thing that you can do for your career. Because until and unless you get your PE license, you won't necessarily, at least within the technical stream, you won't get promoted. And sometimes even for management positions, a lot of employers do require the engineers to have PE license um, in addition to maybe some of the other degrees like MBA and whatnot. But uh, P license will definitely help your cause in the technical field, also within the managerial field. Now, one of the most common questions that I get from students, or I should say that this is not really a question, it's sort of an observation, that they find the biggest challenge while preparing for the PE and the FE exam is the fact that they already have their hands full. They actually regret not taking this sooner. So I agree that the best time to take the FE exam was when you were still in school maybe or freshly graduate, but after that, the next best time is now, right? We cannot go back in the past. So if you delay it further, they're gonna get more difficult. So if you are already employed as a power systems engineer and really want to give your career that slingshot effect, then the best thing you can do if you're not already licensed is to get the license. And if you're already licensed, you have to figure out where you are in the career, like which trajectory you are on. If you're in the technical stream, then you should develop a broad and deep at the same time range of technical skill sets that are required by the industry, that are required by your employer to further excel. But if you are on managerial track, then you should develop a much more generalistic attitude towards projects and get to know a lot of different areas of the business, a lot of different areas of the industry, because that will help you become a good manager. So there are lots and lots of opportunities. It's an exciting time to get into the power systems industry. And I hope that you benefited uh, from this video and learned a few things along the way.